Hey everyone, how are you doing? Okay, so as you can see, I'm uh, missing Dennis. Um, don't worry about it, he's on his way. Dennis is from the south, which means he is probably going to be about 10 minutes late. Uh, so I got some posters going here. Um, the Fallen, it's a web series we're doing. So you got the captain, um, mate, he's played by Dennis, obviously. Dennis's character is an immortal being. And he's actually a pretty badass. I'm a vampire slash angel. Yes, I have tea. I'm English. Um, can you hear me okay? Is my microphone picking me up? I've turned off the volume on my stream, so I can't actually hear whether or not you can hear me. So, yeah. Ah, it's not coffee, it's tea. Anyway, um, so this episode is actually different to what it was supposed to be. The first episode was supposed to be um, Ruka, a maid, the only made vampire finding uh, Diana bringing Raphael back to life Raphael being my character however Lady Vermin who plays Ruka recently started university which means she doesn't have time to hang out with the old people because we ain't the cool kids so her schedule dramatically changed uh with that change, we had to make arrangements, and we rewrote the script and filmed it in about three days. And then I've spent the last two months piecing it together. It's entertaining. We did the fight scene uh, with about an hour's practice. There's... It, it's an um, interesting combination of drama and comedy, and the comedy in it is just off the wall crazy we've got some good music we've got bleeding again by thomas claxton as the opening theme you just heard that if you were watching the countdown we have um the fallen custom music by adam j eros also a internationally touring award-winning musician so the music we have is phenomenal it's all it fits perfectly with what we're doing isn't that right Dennis oh wait that's right still got six minutes um <laughs> that's something I've come to realize about the deep south in America is clocks do not work if, if you tell someone to be somewhere at a certain time give them an extra 10 to 15 minutes so this is a Q and A. Um, we have May Carey on the chat as well. Uh, May Carey is Diana. She's a uh, Medea from ancient Greece, and her character is still the granddaughter of Helios, the sun god. The world we've created has many gods. Not all of them are real. Some of the gods of Folklore, uh, Norse gods, Thor, things like that. They are actually, they are actually just um, powerful. Yes, like fake news. They are powerful individuals who, to a mortal man, looks like a god. However, they're just well, me messing around. Um, we do have real gods, so there are several realms involved. The ethereal realm is where the gods live. The ethereal realm has a lot of power over the physical realm, which is where mankind lives. And we have the seven archangels of the Bible. So, Azrael, Gabriel, Uriel, Michael, Raphael, uh, Samael, I think I already said Samael. Anyway, we have the entire uh, menagerie of archangels. So they will be showing up. The creator, as it were, isn't God. Isn't it's just a powerful being. 
Hello, Bella. Uh, as I said earlier, Dennis, Dennis is from the Deep South. He'll be here shortly. Um, set your clocks about 10 minutes um, late. So, but as you see, I've got his name up there ready. So when he gets here, he will sit down. Uh, but yeah, I know several of you have seen the trailer for it. And if this Q&A goes well, I'm actually going to do a private screening on a public forum of the first episode since it is complete and it's ready to go in three days time so if we actually do well on this q a i'm going to play the full episode so you can see the captain you can see may in all of their glory because they did very well with this with this episode yeah, one of the descriptions that we gave to the show yes well not right now but at the end of the q a um, May hasn't even seen the finished product. No one except me has seen the finished product. Yes, May, we're actually going to get to see the show. And again, I'm the only one that's seen it, so I know what it looks like. Um, it's basically a live action anime. You've got an archangel who is uh, an immortal who's pretty much been dead for the last couple of hundred years. You've got Medea, the granddaughter of Helios, the sun god, priestess of Hecate, who is also one of the true gods. What just happened? It made a noise. Anyway, so we've got all of that stuff going on. Um, you've got Captain Malcolm, which is Dennis's character. He was cursed with immortality. He's originally Asteron, one of the Argonauts. Oh, that was you following. Thank you very much for the follow. So, yeah. Um, so you got Asteron, one of the original Argonauts, which is pretty cool. He, he's not a true immortal. He dies and resurrects. Uh, circle of life, Gaia theory, that kind of thing. However, the difference is when he resurrects, his memories stay intact. So, every time he comes back to life, he remembers every previous life he has had. So, puberty really annoys him because he's been through it so many times. Malcolm and Raphael were friends during the golden age of piracy that that's hinted at in this first episode yes he remembers all of the ways he dies including the one including the times that Raphael has killed him um the priestess the poster that just popped up on my screen uh she's actually a true immortal being a blood descendant of a god of a real god she cannot die by old age she can die through um murder she's not invulnerable but she is invincible you know, she is immortal uh and that's one of her little traits is she cannot die and then so she's seen humanity go through its ups and downs and roundabouts and she got tired of it. She has not been involved with humanity since the Salem witch hunts. And that was actually because all of the people she was training to try and help save reality were killed in the witch hunts after they stopped a Kelpie attack. Uh, those of you who don't know what a Kelpie is, it's an Irish fae. Um, look it up. K-E-L-P-I-E. That's one of the beautiful things I like about this show. We've actually written in lots and lots and lots of, is there gonna be cool magic effects? Eventually. Um, I'm still working on getting a decent um, visual effects program. But we have uh, Scandinavian, Irish, American, uh, Greek, pretty much all of the Fae mythos and things like that throughout time and, and history. For those of you who've seen the old Gargoyles cartoon, 
where they went to the fairy realm and you saw Oberon, the king of the fairies, and Odin, and um, all of those people. And yeah, th those people were all classed as fairies. Uh, Titania and Oberon were the parents of the fairies who are real gods in our show. Um, Oberon is a god, not a fairy. But the Fae are mythological creatures um, that actually have the ability to encourage man's free will, which is why the Archangels don't like them. Because the Archangels are trying to subdue humanity. In our story, humanity is a failed servant race. So that's, that's um, what humanity is and where they're supposed to be. And I don't have anything from Dennis. Yeah, that um, that kind of thing, Bella. Uh, not just anything that's not human, though. Because there are some things that are not human that are not fey. Uh, fey are... Because um, we, we do have demons. Demons are a thing. And that's as we develop into later seasons, you get to finally meet the demons and things like that. But yeah. I, this, it, this is a Q&A, guys. I'm just rambling on trying to give you some more information. Um, but please, if you, if you have any questions, if you want to weigh in on anything, please do. Because that's why we're here. And the story was originally written in 2008. I wrote a book while I was at Disney called Fallen to Light. Um, Fallen to Light is... A very dramatic book which I'm currently um, revising and re-editing to fall in line with uh, the Fallen Rise of Redemption because some of the changes we made for the show actually translate really well into the book and so if this all goes well I will actually be releasing the book Fall Into Light uh, in the next year or so and this first episode I've already got some people lined up that are gonna roast it and it's a pilot episode. It was it was done on a like thousand dollar budget, which came out of my pocket. So th this is a pilot episode. It's gonna it's just there for we're gonna put it out for a month. See what people like it. See what kind of interest it gets. Run a crowdfunding campaign to get uh, funding for the rest of the series. And once we get the funding for the rest of the series, but it's just gonna be rock and roll, and there'll be no stopping us. Uh, yes, it's a show written from a book, written from a show. Because the show was written from the book, and now the book is being modified to match the show. Because as we've been going, the plot line for the book, uh, well, the book series, is actually evolving with the TV show. Uh, I think Game of Thrones. The guy who wrote the books, killed everyone. Uh, Fifteen years later, they made a TV show of it, and the TV show follows a slightly different route. And if you listen to J.R. Martin, he says that he's okay with that. Because he doesn't want the show to be his books, because then the people who have been fans of his for 15 years will already know what's going to happen. He likes it when they vary from his books. But there are things you'll see in the show that you won't find um, in the book. There's things in the book you won't find in the show. Feel because of timing. I can put a lot more into a book than I can in a show, but I can put a lot more detail in a two-minute scene than I can in the um, three, like three, three chapters in the book, so. It's interesting what is being left out and what is not. Because in the book, it starts with the fall of Atlantis. It goes from the fall of Atlantis to um, ancient Egypt, then to modern-day New York. Uh, how long is the show going to be? The episodes are going to be between 10 and 15 minutes. It's a mini-series. The show itself right now, we have six seasons planned. Uh, they're penned out with the storyline, so we know where they're going from there. And um, th there's chance for more. There's chance for less. We'll just see how popular it is. Like, a, like any TV station. If something is not popular, there's no point making it. And we're doing this for fun. 
None of us are paid. We're just having a blast with it. So, you know, all the monies that go into it have gone into uh, scenes, music. It's gone into equipment purchases. So any purchased equipment, I don't need finances for. Because I already have the equipment. Yay! <clears throat> but yeah, the, the first episode is supposed to be released. Uh, how do you find actors? Oh, I look under rocks. Or behind trees. They hide behind trees fairly frequently. You'd be surprised. There he is. Come on in. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you Dennis. As I said, Dennis is from the south. Give him 10, 15 minutes. Right on the money. Cup of tea, fish curry. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Bella is uh, watching the stream. Oh. Let's see if this works. Let's see if it works. Okay. What am I working? Well, I put your name up there. Oh. I'll, I want to see. I want to see if you line up with your name. Okay. Oh, look at that. Huh. It's almost like I knew what I was doing. Oh, I'm a little off camera. That's okay. We can adjust. Hey, Bella. All right. So there we go. Going to eat my curry. Oh, please do. That's why I made it. It's going to be cold, though. No problem. <laughs> For those of you who don't know, I'm actually a uh, pretty damn good cook, too. All right. Fat guy approved. <laughs> Yes, curry. It's uh, the number one dish in all of England. It's uh, from the days of when we were conquering India. Pretty sure it's quite popular there too. Oh yeah, it's quite popular in India, but it's actually it's actually the uh, number one food in England. Uh, it's it, not fish and chips. No, you'd be surprised. Mm. It's a uh, fish curry. It's a uh, fish madras, actually. They're slightly spicy. So yeah, I've uh, gone over the characters that we have, um, mm -hmm. gone over the sudden rewrite we had to do when Lady Vermin went to university and we were no longer the cool kids. Um, yeah. I went over how your character was one of the Argonauts. And that's pretty much where we are right now. There's not a lot of questions being thrown at us except from May. Uh, Bella threw one in. Bella threw in a question. Mm -hmm. So how did you develop the characters? Um, <laughs> fun story. We already had the characters in mind. Uh, this is what we wanted. This is what the look we want. And then I... Uh, sat down over about a month with the captain um, T.S. Tyre and Lady Vermin and the four of us together came up with the storylines um, for the characters and the individual characters themselves so that was a full team DMC effort on how to get those characters developed and uh, every time we start the camera rolling the characters just take on a new life mm -hmm. Something you learn doing live theater and film acting is it doesn't matter whatever the hell dusk is. It doesn't matter what script you're given. As soon as the actors get hold of it, it will become its own thing. They evolve. Yes, yes, I, I know. I'm treating it with the contempt it deserves. Mm, mm, no, no, no. We will, we will not promote that show on this. On this. Um, what show? What show? What show? There's a show. Exactly. Mm. But um, as I say, uh, May Carey actually put me in touch with our composer. Uh, she was watching him on Twitch. Uh, stuck on luck. His name is Adam Eros. He's hilarious. His streams are pretty much improv. And I contacted him and said, so this is what I'm doing. Yeah, you want to work on it? He's like, yeah, why not? Oh, is that the Tyrannosaurus arm piano guy? Yeah, okay. Tyrannosaurus arm piano guy. Because he has two webcams on his screen. One looking at him, one looking at his piano. But they line up perfectly well, so you see his hands at the at, um, and his arms up to his elbows. So he looks like he's got T-Rex arms. I do love that post review. 
Mm-hmm. One of the few pictures of myself I actually like. A lot of the pictures you like of yourself are ones that reproduce. Mm-hmm. <laughs> And that's May's favorite picture of me right there. I actually pulled that face just because um, it was. What was the budget for costuming? Um, it, however much it was for his material to make the coat, everything else is out of our wardrobes. <laughs> the costumes are pretty much stuff we found and modified, except for the captain's coat. I wanted a brown coat. Yes, that's because the captain is, in fact, a brown coat. Yes, it says so right on my bracelet. Uh, it says in the back of his car, too. Yes, it does. Yes. If you hadn't guessed, with it, with the character being called Captain Mal, it's actually Malcolm B. Argos, because he was an Argonaut. By the way, I had no idea he actually had a last name until you wrote that synopsis of the character he didn't have a last name until i wrote that oh, synopsis nice. of the character <laughs> it was just captain mal and then while i was writing the synopsis i'm like you know what he needs a last name yeah i am complete i have a name <laughs> see i may, am not a number i am a free man may who uh, acts alongside you didn't even know you had it. i know how could you not know i had a last name pragma Yes, that is a running joke. Pragma is uh, Greek, ancient Greek. The wonderful thing about Greek is they have many, many names for love, lovers. Where, and we kept using it over and over and over in the script because we got a kick out of it. And then one day, Dennis asked us, so what is pragma? Go ahead, Dennis, you can, you can tell him. Pragma is basically Greek for friend zone. Yes, Pragma is Greek for friend zone. A, a wonderful land that I am president of. Hey. And in, in the story, as in, as in real life. In the story, it has a little more, though, because obviously Diana was Medea in ancient Greece, who Jason married, and he was an Absolutely. Argonaut. So you're you're looking you're looking at uh, several thousand years of being friend zoned. He he isn't just in the friend zone. He owns the friend yeah. zone. He has real estate there. <laughs> hmm. So throw some more questions at us. I've given you a lot of information about the show. And, what would you like? Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, but will we first see? Diana and Malcolm together in the show. Yeah, he doesn't like her very much. It's um, it's not that he doesn't like her. He hasn't seen her for five hundred years, and every time he sees her, it's because she basically um, hey, I mind need, blasts. Her. Hey, I need a thing done. <laughs> yeah. Hey, babe. And the last, the last time he reached out to her. Uh, he was in trouble and something bad happened which gets explained in the second season in the episode um, called Malcolm's Coat and it's all about why Mal is wearing that old duster so uh, um, a lot more of the history between those two gets revealed in the second season you know your friend is British when he has a cup of tea waiting for you. Yeah. Well, I'm not complaining. <laughs> That's good tea, too. It it's been steeping long enough that it's uh, got a good flavor to it. Yes, there is a whole, the whole show just about his coat. And we're actually going to make several. Uh, it is chai tea. We're actually going to make several coats because at varying points it's going to have to be um, in varying states of disrepair. At which, at which point uh, Diana is going to repair it for him. Because it's a very important coat. Very important, man. Show the tower and everything. <laughs> Since nobody else is asking questions, I've got a question. Okay. <laughs> what, what exactly... 
because my, my, maybe this is just something I've missed in reading the scripts. What exactly is the relationship between Raphael and Diana? <laughs> is it just like, hey, it's you again? You want to? Wanna... Yeah, pretty much. Uh, yeah, you want to? You want to knock boots? Yeah. Th there's an episode um, again when we're going into Malcolm's backstory that would reveal a little more about Raphael and Diana and how they met, um, and basically why Asteron got cursed. I haven't told you that bit yet. No. Okay. Um, so there is a lot more involved in that. But basically, Raphael is um, a smooth-talking playboy. And... Typecasting. Typecasting is a thing. Uh, <laughs> so every time they meet up, it's like, oh, hey, it's you. Yeah, it is. <laughs> How you doing? <laughs> and it can get awkward at times for some of the characters. Mm. It's like, hey, Diana, I think we need to... <laughs> um... So yeah, there's there's lots of moments where Raphael will uh, one of, one of our favorite scenes. We actually have a pixie in the first season, and pixies are notorious for glitter. And our pixie is a bit of a masochist, and everyone knows iron hurts pixies, and we find this out when someone holds a sword to her, and she goes, "Ooh!" So I go, "Raphael's like, I saw that." He's like, what? And he taps her with the sword and she shivers and he's like, <laughs> next th next time you see the, you know, you hear um, Diana and Ruko talking and says, so, do you hear bells? And Raphael walks out and just coughs glitter everywhere and she's really, a pixie. What? <laughs> uh, how old is Raphael? Uh, Raphael has been around since the beginning of creation. One of the few people Malcolm can look at and go, you old bastard. Yeah, one of the few people Malcolm looks at and goes, you're old. <laughs> but yeah, Raphael is actually a fallen archangel. Um, so he he was actually given the power to guide creation. He is the fallen. And then all of the guys that are working with him are, uh, let's just say they have dark pasts. As I put in the character description on our uh, Facebook page, the Fallen Rise to Redemption on Facebook. Medea sold her children, well, gave her children to Hecatite to keep them safe after burning Jason's fiance alive with a dress. So instead of having her children punished for her crimes, she gave them to Hecate. Um, how did he fall? Rapidly. Mm -hmm. um, Raphael, Samael, Uriel and Jophiel um, tried to guide humanity, even though it was a failed experiment. Uh, yes, mate. So they were trying to support humanity. Osriel, uh, Gabriel, and Michael were all trying to destroy humanity. So that's where the war came down, and basically, when humanity destroyed the creator's city, this is in the book. Um, the four that were with humanity got cast down to be with the humans forever and the other three disappeared into the uh, varying realms trying to find a way to fix everything uh, that was the fall of Atlantis the creator's city is called is Atlantis and it was named by Azrael for his dead wife um, I uh, think I named her I think she's actually Atalanta so it's Atalanta's grave is the city of Atlantis Again, from there it goes to ancient Egypt. I should let you read the book sometime. <laughs> what do I think of my character? I love my character. I had, I actually had a lot of, uh, I had a lot of input into my character. In fact, I, I pretty much wrote my own character, didn't I? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I come up Malcolm, with the name, the letter. Malcolm. Malcolm does not appear in the books. Malcolm is a for the show only character. That is going to be written into the books. And I, yeah, it's just I'm a huge brown coat. If you don't know what a brown coat is, just just Google Firefly, greatest show ever. You'll you'll <laughs> reward yourself watching. Soon to be the second greatest show ever. Yeah. <laughs> well, no. Anyway, yeah. Um, so I said, and so he asked me. I said uh, we were we were actually at the gym one day, and 
He said, so what do you want your character to be for the Fallen? I said, I jokingly said, I want to be Captain Malcolm. He said, okay. And I said, I want to wear a brown coat. And he went, okay. Next thing I know, there's May Carey making uh, a brown coat. making a brown coat for me out of out of what, a canvas. Yeah, out of brown canvas, and there I am, Mister Cowboy, wearing a brown duster, talking like uh, Val Kilmer from Tombstone. And that was his choice as well. Yeah, I, I yeah. Cause he I'm said, a, "Can I can I do that?" And I want to have the line, "I'll be your Huckleberry." This is only, <laughs> and I told him, "Only if you can do the voice." That man practiced. <laughs> Well, Raphael, does this mean we're no longer friends? Oh, I'll be all, I'll <laughs> always be your friend, darling. <laughs> uh, I thought when I first started doing the voice, I went a little too. You went a little, a little too, too much, too dandy yeah. with it. Yeah, very. very I had to pull dandy. it back a little bit. So when we did the fight scene, um, he kept slipping out of his voice. Is something you do a lot, Captain? Um. Occasionally, I try to do accents. I fail miserably at it. Trying to do an accent and a fight scene at the same time was uh, tricky. Yeah, because I do not multitask very well. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I do I do some voices. Mostly it's just because I'll be sitting there talking and something comes out and I'll go, oh, I, what was that? <laughs> but yeah, I, I love the character of Malcolm. I love the fact that there's so much, he has so much history that you know, pretty much at any point in the show, we can go. Okay, this happened in his life. Yeah. So, so this is an aspect of him now. It gives. It gives so. I like the fact that it gives so much. It gives so much to work with having okay. that kind of a, a long backstory. Yeah, and we can add anything we want to the character, and it will make sense because we can just say, "Yeah, that was another life." There's so much you can do with that that you can't do with a. A one lifetime fully defined character. Again, I think that's one of the reasons that Doctor Who is um, so popular as well. Yeah. Because after like 2,000 years of going back and forth through time, you've got to have some quirks. Mm. And Captain Mal has quite a few, <laughs> quite a few quirks. See, the advantage he has over Raphael, though. Is Raphael's been asleep for how long? Uh, Raphael was asleep for a couple of hundred years, and then he got um, deaded. Yeah, Raphael's been asleep for a long time. Malcolm's been on the ground doing shit the whole time, so he's yeah. But you've been a dead a lot. You've been dead a lot longer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you guys have totally swapped facial hairstyles from the posters. Is that we right? have? Yes, 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 we it have. Is he on? Recently, Captain did a penguin appearance with the Ultimate Experience, and I do the Green Arrow for the, the CW here in Charlotte. And uh, so, of course, the facial hair is necessary for the Green Arrow. Mm -hmm. And I have another Green Arrow gig with the Ultimate Experience, uh, April 7th, so I'm just letting it grow through to then. Then I got to get rid of it because I'm doing Batman, and um, we may be recording some more of the Fallen. And I've got to, I got to keep the facial hair going for a little bit because I got to be Abbott and Cost or I got to be, uh, gotta be uh, yeah, Lou Costello at a uh, Charlotte Comic Con. But it's gonna be fun. How hard does it deal with regular facial hair changes? Well, get, getting it gone's easy. <laughs> it's it's Gr growing it's, it out. Yeah. Growing it out takes about four days. Oh, for me, it takes longer for me. Oh, okay. Like this, this is. Let's see, I shaved Sunday. Damn. Yeah, my facial hair grows slow. Yeah, my, my this this is like a week. <laughs> but that's okay, and that's yeah. You know, my fa my facial hair grows. My uh, head hair doesn't. It, it's no it's getting thinner. Hey, dude. Do you use any special beard products? Yes, testosterone. I am full of testosterone. Amongst <laughs> other things. <laughs> oh shit, what? Mm. Anyway, um, tell us about your guns, Captain. The gun. They, do we do the whole... Uh, yeah, do the whole thing. Do the whole thing. Where are they? Where are they? Um, <sighs> let me see. 
Yeah, how about that? Hey, let me, let me get all these. Okay, well, hey, I think that's still in my, my I think that may still be in my car. Ah, uh, okay. So I, I can't do the whole bit, but uh, there we go. So my guns, I have two. I have uh, twin pistols. They are called Sam and Dean. They are my Winchesters. And uh, they, uh, they are angel killers. Specifically, that is literally the all. Even even though I tend to pull them out and point them at everything, well, they even, tend, just because they they'll, only, kill, they'll only <laughs> kill angels, but they'll damn well hurt anything yes. else. But yeah, they will only kill angels. They will wound everything else, but they will only kill angels. Uh, they were specific. Do we ever actually come up with a backstory for the guns? Uh, yes, uh, Samael, who. Um, obviously was a fallen archangel. Yeah. He tried to design them with Colt, but Colt didn't want anything to do with it. So he convinced Winchester to make you some pistols, and he was the one that actually got involved with it, which is why they're angel killers, because part of his power of creation is death. So he put in there, Been there. The, ability, <laughs> the ability to kill angels with your guns. Uh -huh. So it was supposed to be Sam Colt. Yeah. But I really like the idea of having them Winchesters and calling him Sam and Dean because yeah. you're a Supernatural fan. Yeah, I am. I, I, have the, I have the full Super Hulock fandom going on. You know, you don't know about the Super Hulock fandom? Super Hulock? Yeah. Uh, Supernatural, Doctor Who, and Sherlock. Oh, okay. The, the British Sherlock. With... Uh, why did you have angel killers? To kill angels. To kill angels. Because, like, <laughs> you know, that is actually a good question. Like, I didn't start out hunting angels. At what point in my existence did I just go, you know what, I need pistols to you hunt didn't, angels. You didn't. Huh? You didn't. That, that comes back to that whole backstory thing okay, that yeah. we're doing. Um, basically, the reason he got cursed is because of me. Um, Asshole. <laughs> yeah. This is all stuff that I'm still writing that I haven't actually told the captain. It's a work in progress. Yeah, the, re the reason he is and got angel killers is because me and Samael knew that the others would be coming back. So we made sure that you were armed, that when they came back, you could fight back. Because they knew I was a badass. Yep. <laughs> Aster on the bold. Even though I've never won a fight against Raphael. But that's because I you, cheat. You always kill me. I cheat. Every time. You cheat. Yeah. Well, you didn't cheat in, in the pirate death. I know, but I didn't take it seriously either. Um, you didn't. <laughs> that's right. I'm, I'm, a, I'm an archangel. I have superhuman strength and speed. I cheat. <laughs> I'm, how did you die? <laughs> With a sword through your chest. How did it get there? I don't know. He wasn't there a minute ago. You son of a bitch. <laughs> Man, we, we keep, there, there are several bets that um, Raphael and the captain have. One of them, which we get into a fight about later, is who would win, the Spaniards or the English during the Spanish Armada? And then he went and died, so he never paid me my money. <laughs> so we actually have an entire fight scene based on the fact that with inflation, I should be a billionaire. <laughs> and he just doesn't have that kind of money, so we fight. Um, another bet is taking out people's eyeballs with one shot. Mm. Uh, I like that one. At the end of the episode, there's a little outtake of when we were practicing for that and coming up with that whole skit. So at the end of the credits, there's actually outtakes. Genuinely, a lot of like the really like funny bits in this show is because me and him were sitting around going, "Hey, wouldn't this be funny?" Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. You just sit there and go, so, uh, yeah. Uh, and again, Raphael's been around so long, he flirts with everything, and every time he tries to flirt with Molly, he pulls out one of the guns and goes, boy. <laughs> we, have, we, we actually, we're, during rehearsals and stuff, we actually have this running joke of uh, Raphael start to flirt with uh, with Mal, and he'll go, okay, there was that one time, that yeah. one time, and I told you that was it. <laughs> and, that, and again, that comes from... Uh, a scene we Raphael floats with everyone. Every, yeah, yeah. Every, he he is he is the uh, the the Captain Jack Harkness of this show. 
I, I wear a belt and suspenders because you literally cannot keep, keep your, your pants, pants on. Yeah. <laughs> and of course, as we develop, and Raphael finds out that vampires are popular now, and part of his curse for falling was be he has to feed on humans, so he becomes a vampire. So, of course, vampire is now popular. The man's loving it. You know, there's scenes where we're walking down the street. It's either me or him or me or Ruka. And I'll walk past him and go, I flash the teeth. And they go, ooh, stop it. What? I just said hello. <laughs> you know? And direct Jack Harkness quote. So we're going to be doing a good bit of that, too. <laughs> but uh, we, we actually have some uh, people we've worked on other things with us. Um, Megan Rogers is going to be Eileen the Banshee. The Banshee is a non blood fairy. Are all fallen angels vampires? Yes. But are all vampires fallen angels? No, there's only. There's a, um, the four fallen angels and Ruka. They're the only vampires on the planet. Okay. And they don't sparkle. They do not sparkle. That's a, another joke in when we first meet the other archangels, the ones that didn't fall. Mm -hmm. They sparkle. <laughs> and one of the one of the complications that we're coming up against, which is gonna be fun, is all of the archangels are identical. And there's fight scenes between archangels. That's going to be fun. Did all vampire myths come from those four? No. All the vampire myths came from Raphael. Just Raphael. So like Bram, Bram Stoker, Anne Rice, all of that came from you? Yeah. Everyone, everyone else hides the fact they're vampires. Raphael's like, hey. So you're Lestat, basically. Yeah. I like it. <laughs> So it, it's gonna it's gonna be a lot of fun. There's a, w there's one point that um, I kick my own ass as the archangels, and <laughs> one of the captains quotes from his gaming channel, uh, C A P T Who Gaming, is "Come at me, bro." <laughs> so there's me kicking my own ass, lying on the floor, going, "Well, that didn't work the way I wanted to," and you hear, "Come at me, bro." And he comes running in with his angel killers and basically shoots me. The, the bad year. Yeah, well. <laughs> he shoots the good me too at times. Good good in this is... Relative. Relative. Lo, lo, what, um, lo, chaotic good. Yeah. A lot Bordering of the, on neutral. A lot of the stuff we do, um, the traditional lines of good and evil do not exist. <laughs> We're doing good because... The end result will be good, but we're doing it in an evil way. <laughs> we're, right? do we're doing something evil that will uh, eventually, in the end, be good. Exactly. Uh, I have to fight myself. Yes. And I cannot wait to see that. And we're not going to do the whole, you know, me sat there going, hey, stop hitting yourself, stop hitting yourself. We're not doing that. Aww. And no, I did not just hit myself. <laughs> what is the plot? The plot? We have a plot? I was about to say, there's a plot? I don't know. I thought it was just us in front of a camera. Yeah, pretty much. I think there was a script. There was. Yeah. I think I have it around here somewhere. <laughs> oh yeah, it's on the floor. It's over there. Yeah. I actually I have... looked at it once. Yeah. That That is literally, we get together and go, so we're going to film this scene. Which scene is that? Uh... Yeah. Oh, it's that one. Okay. Should I learn my lines? Learn Why? None of the rest of us do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah the, the script is an outline. Whatever comes out is what we'll use. <laughs> it's really more of a guideline than a rule. You know? <laughs> oh, dear. All right. Well, it, it says that was offline. So is anyone still watching? Because <laughs> I might play the episode. But if no one's watching, I'm not going to. I don't want to see it. I know you do. May wants to see it too. She hasn't seen it. Yeah, if you wanted to get more viewers, we could go Facebook Live.
didn't mean for the show. I meant right now. <laughs> Oh, that's okay. I mean, I've I've had it up on Facebook, like putting up there. Hey, we're gonna be doing a thing. Hey, we're doing a thing. Yeah, I'm doing a thing in an hour. Yeah. So uh, if people haven't figured it out that we're doing a thing, that's on them. All right. So I guess we'll play the episode. Yes. Okay. Do do the thing. We'll be right back. Good and evil, matters of perspective. History is written by the victors, and the victors always think they're good. Those who fell, those who were cast down, will soon be our only hope. When the light of creation is threatened and darkness falls, the fallen will rise. All right, there you go. That is the episode. I Thank like, you, May. I like. I know, right? And that's the first time. Um, the thing still on, Mike. The first time anyone's actually seen um, heard the end song or the full episode, except for me. So uh, there you go, guys. Special treat for joining in for the Q and A. Was a jaunty little tune. What was a jaunty little tune I did? Oh dear. Well, that's us at an hour. I think that's a good time for Q and A and a playing of the little uh, playing of the episode there. Uh, I know May loved it. Bella, did you stay around for the end? We've only got two people watching. Uh, sh okay. <laughs> Just shutting up now. <laughs> oh, shut your mouth. Oh, I'm shutting up, shutting. <laughs> okay. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Uh, thanks for the questions. I hope it was a little informational. The episode is released on the 31st of this month, yes. March 2018, 5 p.m. over on our YouTube channel. For those of you that are watching this on the recorded version, you have just missed the episode because I'm editing that out. Oh, that's got to hurt. <laughs> oh. Good night, everybody. You want me to do the, do the, should I do the thing? Do the thing. Do the thing? Do the thing. All right. Everybody, sing along if you know the song. Come on. Good, Good night, night, Martha. Martha.